Welcome into the uh, live stream here for McCready and Siski, powered by Rain Total Body Fuel. Kane Womack is going to join us today on the big show, about 2.15 or so. So we'll get rolling here in just a second. Tyler, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you, brother? I'm good. Good. Busy. Busy Monday, but that's okay. Same here. Got a busy weekend. Been uh, grinding on some paperwork today. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'd rather somebody kick me in my face. <clears throat> I had, uh, had a lot of soccer over the weekend. A lot of basketball over the weekend. I was busy. That's good. Uh, yeah, I didn't do a whole lot, which is – we did a lot. I went and worked out, did busy on Saturday, did some honeydew stuff, but um, chill, man. I realize I look incredibly professional today. I just got out of the gym a minute ago, changed shirts out of a sweaty T-shirt, put on my Harry Kane jersey, and – uh I didn't want to like shower and stuff because I'm gonna go for a walk afterwards if I ha can get away from the phone. Got one more Zoom to take. <laughs> I don't know how, if you're gonna be able to get off the phone. You were on the phone when I got here. Yeah, I've been on the phone a good bit. Um, all right, we'll get rolling. Yeah, let's get rolling. It's gonna be fun today. Got my tag team, other, my other tag team partner coming in. Welcome into another edition of McCready and Siski, powered by Rain Total Body Fuel. Ooh, good one. That was a good one. I was, needed you to do that one there because I needed to turn some volume up. I'm Neil McCready. That is uh, Tyler Siski. We'll be joined today by South Alabama coach Kane Womack, friend of both of ours, so an interview that probably will go off the rails. Although Relatively pretty quick. <laughs> although Kane can, Kane's, Kane's got to put his corporate side forward. Yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's a coach now. He's very serious. Yeah, so and, I, and, and he's, a, you know, he's a hot commodity here in the next few years, so he's he's got to be careful with associating yeah. with us yeah i know I, I i strategically organize these questions to where we have like uh football oriented like real head coach questions before we go off in the rails and then i have i noticed my football questions were very light yeah <laughs> and then my off the rails questions go deep so it'll be fun it'll be fun hey uh look what you're rocking over there day got you a surprise oh yeah let's see got you a surprise oh cherry limeade at the cherry I made again. That's good. I'm rocking with the Inferno again today. It's oh, you're, off day. Same so. thing. Watermelon. It works, dude. I take an off day. I still lose weight. That's good. Because my metabolism. It's also because you're consuming fewer calories. <laughs> I mean, I hate to break this to you. It's not true. <laughs> it's all citrulline, brother. I, I don't know how to tell you that it's uh, it's also calories. It's all citrulline. I was talking to someone today who's lost 30-something pounds, and I said, they were talking about all the things, and I said, no, no, it's what about your nutrition? Oh, I've cut way back. There you go. <laughs> oh, it's funny how that works. <laughs> it's math. Uh, we're brought to you by Rain Total Body Fuel, 300 milligrams, natural caffeine, BCAAs, electrolytes, zero sugar. It's got what you need to push your limits, achieve your goals. Check them out on Instagram at Rain Body Fuel to learn more. So before we get Kane in here, and I, I want to get this before I get to the 45 minute mark. So I won't drop any F bombs because I went a whole show last, last week. No, it's good. All right. My mom was very proud of me. I was proud of you. <laughs> did you see, because Harbin's already mentioned it in the chat, did you see how the Braves Red Sox game ended? I did. Okay. For anybody under a rock, I'm all for shortening the games and all that stuff. Cool. Okay. The Braves and the Red Sox in spring training were tied 6-6 six to six in the bottom of the ninth. The Braves were up, bases loaded, a 3-2 count and two outs. Mm -hmm. And they called the batter for being too slow out, ball game over. Yes, that's correct. I mean, look, dude, I'm all for all of the let's speed up the game. But that's, come on, man. I mean, at what point do we realize that we're being a little too silly? I was watching the first inning of Mets Cardinals today, and uh, they had the pitch clock. And I actually was listening. I was coming home from Tupelo yesterday afternoon after Carson's second game, and I was listening to Cubs Dodgers. And I just noticed how much faster it's going. I mean, the game yeah. is much faster. And Carson and I were talking about this. He's 16. I don't know that I want it to be that fast. Baseball's supposed to have a certain rhythm yeah and and what i did notice watching and maybe this will go away yeah what i noticed watching today mets cardinals was 
instead of watching where the catcher was setting up, watching kind of what was going on, I was watching the clock. That clock's right there, and I'm just watching it. I was watching clock, which is fine. In football, you watch clock. You, you, you watch the clock in basketball. But in baseball, you don't really watch the clock. Yeah. And, I'm, I, and I was watching the clock, and I thought, well, maybe I'll get used to it. Maybe this is something that's just, this is just par. This is what's coming, and I have no choice. And two years from now, if I'm still around, I'll, I'll, I'll go, oh, look at that. It's, um, you know, it's, I won't even notice the clock. It'll just be a part of the deal. And that's what they're counting on. And um, I'm okay. Like I literally, I'm okay with everything that happens in the middle of the game. I'm okay with speeding the game up. I, I mean, I, I'll get used to it. I'm okay with that. And there's a rhythm. Yeah. Okay. It's a little different. Okay. I'll adjust. Don't end the game on it though. That's a little, well, if it's a rule, it's a rule. Get that. And that's the problem is you sh- as an umpire or somebody that's supposed to be working in sports, those are things you kind of let go a little bit. I mean, if it's, well, hey, I'd be curious to see if in the season they let it go. They, they have told them. Give they, him a warning. Well, they told them going in in spring. They said, hey, we're, we're going to enforce this. Because there, there was a story it was written by, I want to say Jason Stark, but it may have been someone else. And if it was Buster Olney or someone else, I apologize in the event that your family is listening uh, and you want credit for the story. Whoever wrote it, it was, hey, this is going to be a real crap show. Right. The whole spring. That the umpires had been told enforce it you think they're doing it in the spring just to make a point there's no way you're going to be in a game three of the world series and that go into extra innings because of that i think they're doing it in the spring because major league baseball told them by god this spring whatever you do enforce it to the letter of the law now does it change over the course of the season i suspect that it kind of does but this might be major league baseball's way of saying hey if we're going to survive like cole's in the thread he makes a good point he says, good for the game in the long run. Love the pitch clock. Young people want the game to be faster. They, yeah. they, they, T and TV does not want these three hour and, 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 and 38 minute games. They want three hour games, right? You know, in, in minor league baseball, they implemented this a year ago. And by the end of the year, frankly, everybody was used to it. They're doing it in the college game. It's not even as fast as the big league game. And, and they're doing it to speed it up, to make it more palatable for television and we'll see. Yeah, I'm okay. Again, I'm okay with them doing it. I'm just not okay with them ending a the game doing it. I guess the umpire's response, and I understand, I'm just kind of playing some devil's yeah. advocate. I think the umpire's response would be, well, it's the rule with one ball and two strikes. It's the rule in the third inning. Get in the box. Yeah. Get in the box. Be ready. Let's go. While we're talking about officiating and umpiring, also, I thought this was very interesting uh, based on our last conversations that we've had on the podcast. The competition committee in the NFL met, and they reviewed 80-0 roughing the quarterback calls. How many do you think they found uh, that were questionable? Out of 80 calls, question, <laughs> how, do you, how many do, of those 80 do you think they, they saw as a questionable call? Well, I know the answer because you ran this by me in pre-show. My answer at the time, I'll just give it again, was, I don't know. I would guess not many. Three. I would like to know what 80 calls that you saw and that 77 of the 80 were not questionable because I'm an offensive guy. I love, hey, thank you for my free 15. But I would go adventure, I would say almost 50% of them are now questionable because none of the penalties now are he let the ball go. Very few of them now are he let the ball go one, two, three extra steps and knocked the shell of the quarterback, mm-hmm. which was the whole point of the rule when it first got established. Now it's all, well, your body weight landed on him or um, you grazed his helmet going by. You you know, there's not, there's not really truly every one of these calls now are the questionable type. They're, they're not. They're the, sending a very clear message to oh, the yeah. league. The, and the message is very simple. It is, again, it's television and it is, People tune in and go to the games to see Lamar Jackson and yep. Josh Allen and that's and, true. and uh, Joe Burrow and and all those guys. That's that's why they're there. That's why they're there. It's critical that the you go to see Patrick Mahomes, not to see the guy that backs up Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> you fair. you go to see uh, Justin Herbert, not the cat who backs up Justin Herbert. And so it's by God. Hey, look, everybody, we're going to do whatever we have to do to keep those people on the field. Yeah. So stop hitting them. And that's the message. 
And so defensive coordinators, essentially, when you hear, when you read me that stat, and I'm with you, I, I like the game beating football. But if I'm a defensive coordinator going into mini camps, going into training camps, I'm scheming differently about what we do with quarterbacks, how we rush quarterbacks. Instead of hitting the quarterback, I'm trying to hit the, the, the ball. I'm trying to do, I'm, I'm getting in passing lanes with long arms. I'm, I'm not, and, and whatever you do when you hit him, you don't plow through him. You don't land on him. You just, by God, don't. Yeah, it's a, I don't think they're going to change. Or I wouldn't change as far as what I, what I coach or schemes I came up with. I wouldn't change, but at the same time, I mean, it's it's that they let one go and they don't. Like, if, if you watch the XFL, I know you probably haven't watched any more of it. Uh, maybe you have. I haven't. They, they, the roughing the pasture call is is back to the way it used to be. <laughs> they don't. And those, but those, it's, it's, but those quarterbacks aren't household names. I know, but they will, they will uh, let you get away with a little bit more mm -hmm. in that one. Um, hilarious because we taped on Thursday. AJ and those guys played uh, Thursday night. And he was mic'd up, and on the one of the last drives of the game, they're play, they're running zero blitz, and he knows he's just gonna get hit, and he's buying time, and they got a free rusher. He buys time, buys time, delivers it, and he gets. I'm talking about prototypical on Sundays, roughing the pass. I'm talking about he kind of jumps a little bit to try to get over the guy's head, and gets buried full weight in the body. He goes, <laughs> he's mic'd up. He's like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh god, dang it. Oh, that, that hurts. <laughs> and then it hurts bad enough where he couldn't uh, couldn't even go celebrate with his teammates. And I was messing with him afterwards. I said, they had you mic'd up on that uh, on that next to last touchdown pass when you got hit. He goes, dude. He goes, that was a that was a top five shot I ever got right there. Yeah. He goes, that one, that one stung. He goes, he had to remember that he was mic'd up and not drop some other words. But in the NFL, people tune in to see the quarterbacks. Yeah. And they're going to protect them. If you're really a football junkie, because I know we do have some on here to listen. I am, obviously. It's really pretty cool, um, XFL, to have the volume up. Mm -hmm. You can listen to the coordinators call the plays. And you listen to the quarterback deliver the message in the huddle. And listen to how complex the play call is and then go in. And it's fun for me because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of knowledge that's – a lot of term, terms that are – universal i guess and so able to know what the play is before it's snapped uh is a lot of fun and then you watch stoops and those guys they've kind of because like june jones he is the uh offensive coordinator for uh seattle and he does not care he he will call his full offense but like stoops is coaching in arlington and his coaches are straight wrist banding everything so nobody can understand their terminology some of these guys don't care they're just they're just telling terminology and uh Jordan Tamu, who played quarterback at Ole Miss, yeah. was here. So they're running more of a college style offense to where they're communicating, you know, plays up front and terminology up front. When well, the course of a regular game in a college, you can get away with it because no TV copy picks up your your verbiage. Right. And so it's all you can get away with it week to week. What they're over there calling, you know, yelling their verbiage out to their offensive line and he's mic'd up. I mean, the next team can watch the TV copy and know everything you're yeah, running. Yeah, So that's that's going to be interesting to see if they change it up or whatever they have to do moving forward. And the more you change it up, the more people have to think. And the more yeah. you have to think, the on slower the you go. And with a shorter time being together, it's, it's, yeah. it's pretty interesting as far as that goes. So it's uh, that part's good. AJ played well um, Thursday night. They won, came back. So he's led two back-to-back game-winning drives in two games. Well, he's a pretty good quarterback. He's, he's playing – he played really – he played – a lot better than did week one. Um, he played he played really well. He needs to get some help, man. You know, offensive line play was a little better this week, really across the league. And uh, but receiver play, man. I mean, like it's like they all got a bunch of dudes with no ball skills. Nobody can catch. Yeah, it's wild. A lot of drop balls. A lot of drop balls. Um, I have not watched that though. I I, I thought of you yesterday. I, I was maybe it was Saturday. We were getting Carson some lunch between games, and um, they had – they were supposed to be – was it Pocono? Was that where NASCAR was? No, they were in California. <laughs> yeah, they were supposed to be in California. Oh, the but, other coast. But it got weather. Yeah, they had snow, rain, everything in, in L.A. And so they were replaying on the big screen 
And I wanted to watch the um, Alabama Arkansas basketball game. Yeah. But on the big screen, they were replaying the Daytona 500. I'm like, I can tell you who won. <laughs> can we flip? Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big replay, NASCAR uh, replay guy. Kyle Busch won yesterday. Oh, did he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, you, you were excited about that. I got back from uh, Tupelo from soccer and changed and went to the gym, and I ran the second half of the Mavericks Lakers game. Okay. I said, I'm going to run till it's over. And I was so glad it didn't go to overtime because I was toast. Um, that was what I did. I did not I did not realize there was a NASCAR game. The Lakers were down 27, came back and won, though. It was pretty interesting to watch one team get hot and then Dallas's offense with Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic, two of the best offensive players to ever play. Offense had no flow at all. None. Zero. He's like, what are we, what are you doing? Luka would just like dribble the clock down. Then he would pass it to Kyrie and then Kyrie would pass it to somebody else. I'm like, so you got you two dudes on the floor and the dudes that are taking the big shots are dudes not named Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. Probably they get paid for. Probably not the plan. No, definitely not the plan. All right, I'm gonna check in with Ken. Go ahead. Yeah, make sure just make sure he's got the link. I emailed it to him at the email address that you sent. And I had that email previously, so I know he I literally it. just texted me. He said, hang on one second. Okay. Um while we're waiting on him, <laughs> he's having fun this week. Uh your your Chicago Bears reported reportedly yep. leaning towards moving the number one pick. What's your thoughts? Um, it's what I've kind of thought all along, which is if you believe that Justin Fields is your quarterback. You have to move the pick. You have to auction it off to the highest bidder. And with so many teams in the top six to nine looking for a quarterback, you probably can get a ransom at for, uh, for that pick. I'm getting as much as I can. I'm trying to move down as little as I can. If I'm them, the one that makes the most sense is the Colts at four. The Colts really want that pick. You could fall to four. You're still going to get Will Anderson or Jalen Carter at four because quarterback's going to go one. Whoever trades for one is taking a quarterback. Houston's going to take a quarterback. Um, at two. Probably going to be another quarterback yeah, at two. And Houston might trade up. You, Houston might go, hey, we cannot run the risk of not getting our guy. I think I would. That's And, and that's their ideal world, right? Yeah, I've started looking at it a little bit from a quarterback perspective, I don't know if there is a – what's the best way to say this? I don't know if there is a – and there may end up being one that develops, but it would be very hard for me to distinguish who the best quarterback prospect is. I think they all got strengths and weaknesses. Um, well, you know what is coming this week? It's the Underwear Olympics. And – The combine starts tomorrow for everybody that doesn't know what that means. Anthony Richardson, whose stock is already – skyrocketing before <laughs> the underwear Olympics get rolling. He's probably going to have an incredible workout. He's uh, going to look like 80 gazillion dollars. I mean this in the non-sexual way, but he's going to look amazing. And all these NFL guys are going to look at that dude. What's he? Six, four and a half, almost oh, he's six, pretty, five. He's a beautiful he's thing. He's 230 some odd pounds of basically no body fat. He's got all the skills in the world, can throw the absolute hell out of the ball. Some team's going to fall in love, and somebody in one of those offices is going to say, that's our guy. Or it's going to be Will Levis. Or some team's going to absolutely decide that, nope, Bryce Young is the it dude. Give us Bryce Young. So he's about to try to get on right now. Okay. Um, and if that's the case, if you're the Bears, that's the greatest news in the world. You want... You want quarterback stock to go up, but you want one or two of these guys to emerge. You Actually, if you're the Bears, you want one guy to emerge as the guy that everybody has to have. Look, Anthony Richardson is going to throw the ball like a – I mean, he is going to wow. There's there's a lot to be wowed about. There's a sure. lot to be – but it all goes back to, like, from a touch perspective. He, he can't layer the throws like everybody – like you need to do at that level. And he can throw it through you. But he can't layer the throws. Accuracy is going to be an issue. Same thing with C.J. Stroud. Accuracy is going to be an issue. Bryce Young is going to be arm strength and size. You know, Will Levis is going to be – he's going to have all the tools. Mm -hmm. You know, Will Levis is going to jump up these boards. Yep. He's going to have all the tools, but you're going to – why didn't you do it in college? That's going to be the question for him, right? Yep. Yep. Everybody's got these questions. And it makes me think – there's my guy. makes me think, you know, what about next year? 
Let's see if we can get him on here. Hey, you got me? Look at this guy right here, man. What's up? What's up? Hey, just remind yourself, uh, you, you are live. Oh, I got it. All right. Well, <laughs> in that case, uh, Neil, Neil, I, I want you to know, know how excited I am to be on with you. you. Um, <laughs> I didn't know, uh, I didn't know Siski was going to be here, but good to see you, Siski. Hey, how about the, I didn't know you were going to show up today, man. You got, got your, you got your new hairdo going, man. You got, you, I mean, did you get a fresh cut? I did, I did get a cut, cut. Not, not for this, this but, but I, I, you know, we had, <laughs> we had Mardi Gras last, last week, and, and you know, you yeah, you, uh, yeah. you got to yeah, throw on, on you got to throw on the, the you know the suit, suit and do the whole thing. <laughs> and we so, we predicted this thing would go off the rails very quickly today when you when you when you got on here, so <laughs> so we're going to try to get like get the football questions out of the way before it goes off the rails. For people that don't know, and all three of us have now lived in Mobile at different at parts of our lives. Mobile <laughs> shuts down for like a freaking month. Yeah. When Laura and I first moved to Mobile, we were so stunned. Like, like we had all these friends that were like, we, we moved onto a street in downtown Midtown Mobile and all these young couples that were from Mobile that we got to know and Mardi Gras rolled around and all of a sudden they're gone. And we're like, where, where did everybody go? Like, what's the deal? And it, it, it just goes on and on and on. You're like, when does it end? And then it ends and then everybody gets back to normal. What did you do for Mardi Gras this year? Um, uh, well, well, we had, we had uh, uh, let's see, you know, we did, did uh, we didn't do as do much of the parades, parades and stuff. And stuff. Um, um, uh, uh, we, we went to went, went to a couple, couple of them. Uh, I, I did a few more, more like, like, you know, you know I, it's, it's one, one thing. thing. So, so, all right, we've, all right, got, we've got like 40, 40 parades, parades, right, that, that happen and all, all these different, different crews that, 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 you know, they have a parade. But more than the parade, they have a ball afterwards, right? So you have the parade and then you finish the parade and then you go to the ball, right? And in Mobile, you, you wear, for most of them, you wear tails, right? So you have a tux or you have tails where, you know, the true, like, penguin tails, all that stuff. Um, but then on top of Do you own a tux or did you have to go rent one? Well, you, you got to rent, you rent one. I, I did, and, and I actually didn't do the tux deal. I didn't do the tails deal. I didn't. Okay. I went, I went to the. To, I, went I went to some, some stuff, stuff that I could, I could wear a suit, suit to only. only. But that's, that's what I was getting at. Is, is there's there's way more, more than just the ball itself. itself. So, so like going, going in, in on the front end of the parade, parade you have, have um, they, have they have what they call, call den, den parties, parties right? right? So, so each, each of these, these crews, crews have, have you know these dens. It's like you know the Elks Lodge. You know what I mean? Basically, right downtown. Um, and, and, and you're doing, doing all that, that stuff where you have like a party, party beforehand and then they, and they have, have what, what they, they call, call barn parties. parties. And, and the barn, barn parties, parties is all their, their um, like, like all their, their floats are in these barns and they have, they have a whole party where, where they just, just everybody, everybody goes, goes, you dress casual, casual. Kids, kids all come out, out hang out and they're just filling their floats. So they're putting all their beads on, they're putting all their other stuff and getting ready for Mardi Gras. So like, so each crew has like four or five parties leading into, into the, the ball, ball itself, itself you know, you know? Um, so, so a lot of cool things to do in mobile for that month all right so <clears throat> before we get this thing off the rails um i want to get your thoughts um because i know they discussed at the afca convention that, that that high level meeting that only the head coaches get to go to yeah yeah the, um so the new clock rules that yeah, yeah are being proposed okay i'm good i'm all we just had a whole clock discussion about baseball before you got on um this new rule specifically the clock running after an incomplete pass can you please give me your thoughts on that yeah, yeah I, I, I so, so okay, okay the uh, you know, you know there, there, there's, there's two two, two, two reasons, reasons right of, of why they're, they're wanting want to speed, speed the game, game up okay and one, one is they're, they're talking about player safety, safety. Um, and, and, I, and I think, you know, maybe, maybe there is some, 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 some truth, truth to that. that. I think the bigger thing that I'm hearing is they, they want the, the TV revenue, right? From, from, from that standpoint, it's about money. It's about TV deals and revenue and all that stuff. The difference in a player playing three to four more plays a game, obviously any more plays, right? There is a certain amount of risk, but we're not talking about 25 reps a game or, or less. We're talking about minutes. We're talking about time that has, has to be, to be filled, filled up on national, national TV. TV. And, that's and that's really, really what this thing comes down, down to. to. So, so within that, that um, what we, we have, have to understand, understand, and I'm, I'm for it, I, I get, I get it. it, I understand, I understand why that's, 
why that's important and, and, and you know that's what pays the bills and, and so okay if we're all on the same page that's that's, that's what it is um but the, but if you if you a couple things were proposed right running running clock um after after first downs cool that that, that makes sense the running after an incomplete pass completely changes the game of football and it's not gonna happen so i know people are talking your guarantee on that it's not going to happen. So, <laughs> our, now that you're our, a head our, coach and you've won 10 games as a head coach, do I have your guarantee that I can sleep well at night knowing that Kane Womack is not going to allow that rule to pass? Yeah, I don't want to say, say I'm, I'm the decision, decision maker. maker. You know what I mean? But, but <laughs> one of them, you know what I mean? I would, I would, I would think, think, right? There's some street cred that's been built up there. So, <laughs> You know, there's, a, there, there's another easy fix to some of this. And I'm, I'm you can basically just adopt a lot of the NFL time rules. They've got it down to a science. Yeah. And then the other thing, and we were at your game against Troy in Mobile back in October. and <laughs> I know what you're about to say. I mean, look, I won't say that I was told that I might be hauled <laughs> off to prison if I kept threatening the TV timeout guy. But when the TV timeout's three and a half minutes or whatnot, and like you have one and then there's two plays and then the coach calls timeout, like, okay, well, let's do it again for four and a half minutes. No, maybe, no, there's a, maybe there's a way to – I mean, the, for the people in the stadium <laughs> – those stoppages are kind of like, man, you were into the game, and now now, now the game sl slows down. There are ways to do this to take some minutes off the clock, but I, I get that, that that's what pays the bills. And, that Kane, you probably don't even realize this because you were in the game, whatever, but me and me and Neil were dying on the sideline because I don't remember if it was the first half or the second half, but whatever it was. It was the first. It was the first half. Y'all had had a very long drive, and then they got the ball and went on a very long drive. And so I'm talking yeah. about like – taken up a ton of the first half yep. yeah and they felt the need in the last minute of her <laughs> minute and a half of the first half to run like every time there was a incomplete pass down there it was a tv well, no, the, the deal the guy said because i asked and he goes well, we got to get seven of them in before halftime <laughs> and they'd not gotten any of them in because like you said the first two drives of the game were like super long time consuming yeah drives and so they're like okay, we got to squeeze these in and so the second quarter was so discombobulated with, yeah. with tv timeouts and well, well I, I'm, I'm totally, totally with you. I mean, and and, and, and you're, you're you know you're, you're giving, giving you're giving us defensive guys, guys right time, time to draw things up on the board and you know low, lower, lower scoring in, in games, games and all that stuff. I mean, what that game was ten to six or whatever, you know. So not only was it slow, but there there wasn't a whole lot on happening offensively in that game. But to go back to the point before, all right, you know, even even if you think about running clock after first downs. These, what's going to happen, and, 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 and as a as defensive, defensive guy, I'm, I'm okay, okay with this, right? <laughs> Let those, those stats are going to look better next year. But, but those, those stats, stats are going to look, look better, better. But I think the think biggest thing that you're going to see are these games where you're down 21 points in the fourth quarter. You're going to have less of those big comebacks. Yep. You know what I mean? Because it's you, needed, NFL game. you needed every second possible – from the middle of the third, whatever, to the fourth, because you were down 24 points, something like that, to be able to come back and win that game. You're just going to have less of those gigantic comebacks. It now, changes your clock NFL, management, too. Do what? It changes your game management at the end of the game. It has, too. Well, it, I think what it will create, right, is more opportunities to go forward on fourth down, right? Those things, the analytics are only going to go up because the analytics are all based off of possessions. How many possessions do you get? A game, a game and trying to find, to find more ways, ways to get those, those possessions that, that, that equal points, right? Right. <laughs> so, so, you know, you know we're, we're already, already, I mean, hell, we're, 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 we're pretty, pretty aggressive, aggressive when it comes, when it comes to, to, to fourth down opportunities. Nobody, Nobody talked talk about, about this a year ago, but at the, at the, at the end, end of the regular, regular I know as a defensive guy, right? But, but I believe in the numbers, you know, um, you know, at the end of the regular season a year ago, um, I'm sorry, sorry. Two, 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 two years ago, we were, we were, we were number, number one in the country in fourth down attempts. We were ahead of Ole Miss. Um, and then they jumped us in the bowl game in fourth down attempts. And, you know, so I'm, I'm all for it, all of those things. But, but I do think when you start looking at running clocks after a first down made, you know, it, it's going to be more of the, the comebacks like you see in the NFL than you do the last couple of years in college football. If you change the incomplete pass deal, this is a different style of game entirely. Um, would you would you like to go? Would you like to? Did, did they come in the room when that when they said that in the head coaches meeting? Did you did anyone in the room go? Who came up with this idea? And yeah, you know, every I think every 
I, there was, I think, I think, I think this, this is what happened. happened. I, think I think they brought, brought it up. up. We all we knew where it was coming, coming from, from, right? But then, but then everybody, everybody was like, like no, 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 we, we can't, can't do that. that. And then the uh, offensive guys, guys got even louder, no, no, no. And the defensive guys went, well, you know. No, 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 we can't do it. You know what I mean? It's one of those, like. See, your your defense starts looking really good. You know what I mean? If we can make this work, you know. They were like, you know, now the more I think about it. <laughs> not so, not so bad. Not yeah, so yeah. bad. We go from giving up thirty-five points a game to giving up six points a game. I mean, hell, I'm going to get a raise. <laughs> it felt like to me they added that in so that you could. It was a built-in compromise, right? That's not going to happen. We'll get the other stuff in this way and 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 make it where everybody feels like they won something. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. serious. It's, 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 it's not. not. I mean, the, the, the incomplete thing's, thing's not going to happen. You just made me feel better. I can go home and sleep better tonight because you said that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm taking it's your guarantee that it's not happening. So you feel you that feel strongly strong about it. It yeah. was weighing on your conscience. God, he's he's been so worked up about I, it. It, it was really, emotional it throwing really, stuff. He he dropped about seventy f bombs. We I, I got I got a letter. forty forty two. I dropped forty two f bombs in one episode when that rule came out. I got a letter going. Hey, you're going to have to put an explicit by the by the label on your show. And I'm like, Hey, Tyler, you got to dial this down, my hey, buddy. Hey, I, I got my I got my son's second grade private school class listening to this show right now, Cisco. Oh, what you- I, I, won't. <laughs> I won't. I won't. I won't say anything. I did get. I went the whole show last show without dropping an f bomb. Well, Aren't you proud of me? That's a, that's real, a real feat, feat right there. It, it is a victory. A it victory is a feat for, for your boy. All right, let me ask. Let's let's go. Let's jump to recruiting real quick. If you could change one, since you're such a rules aficionado and you're getting shit done now, uh, well, there went that one. So since you're getting stuff done now, um, what if you could change one recruiting rule, just one recruiting rule, what would it be? Um. I think, I think, I think um, I, 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 me personally, I think I would, I would like to be able to sign players year round. Um, and and here, here, here's why. All right. not, some have, of, not have a signing day. Not have a signing day, right? Okay. Some, some, some of it is efficiency, and 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 you know, people don't like to use the word roster management at the college level, but that's that's what we're doing. Um, we, we're, we're GMs now as head coaches, right? We're managing our roster as best we can. Um, and so any any tool in the toolkit that helps us manage the roster year round, I'm for that, right? Um, and, and so some of it is is that. Some of it is I think there's a, a moral fiber um, of, of college football that we need to pr- protect. And we're sitting here, you know, we talk about these commitments, right? And we say, okay, well, you're committed. You commit to us on June 22nd. And then you hold that commitment for a young man for six more months while grown men are doing everything they can to get that young man to break his commitment, right? Um, and then when he's committed to you, you're talking about commitment, how important it is and the foundation and marriages and all these other things, right? You're a man of your word. And then you're literally taking your other phone and going like, hey, you know, uh, you know, there's always ways out of things and people make mistakes and you didn't have all the information on June 22nd that you have on October 31st, right? But what are we doing? You know what I mean? Like if, a, if, 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 if I want to make a commitment, all right, right. on my end to a player with a scholarship offer. offer. I'm I'm going to hand him that piece of paper paper that he can can sign and accept that offer right then and there. And And vice vice versa. versa. So now there is an ability ability for for one, me to immediately go, I don't have to worry about whether or not I'm going to sign a left tackle in the 2024 class. I know I'm going to sign that left tackle because I did it on June 22nd. Also, that left tackle knows I'm not going to get dropped like I mean, I recruited, recruited, there were, there were were two, two, actually, actually, there were left tackles, tackles a great example. example. There were two left tackles tackles that we recruited recruited at the end end, uh, of of the cycle cycle. in late January. They were dropped by power five five programs programs and had had no idea idea about it until a day or two before signing. Those Those things won't happen. So the moral fiber of college recruiting gets better and, and your ability to address needs there and now get better. Let me ask you this. You have a really good team. You have a bunch of guys back that played a lot of snaps for a team that won 10 games, 10 11 games, games yeah. 10 games. How much – I know you don't want to name names. I'm not asking you to name names. I'm not even asking you to even remotely refer to what ge- geographic area, but how much tampering happened with your roster that you had to deal with? 
Yeah, I mean, I would say um, six guys. I mean, here, here's the deal. And I, well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I probably need, don't need to say these things publicly, right? But we're you know, live. Some of our, yeah, we're live, right? This is this is this is going out into the, uh, the good news. The good news, <laughs> no, no one's listening. Just go for it. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. yeah. Well, let me let preface, preface: Mom, don't, don't tell anybody. anybody. Okay, but yeah, there you uh, go. Uh, 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 but uh, but, uh, but outside, outside of that, that you know, you know we, we some, some of our, our best, best players, players are, are, are sophomores. You know, what I mean, rising juniors. juniors. And, and so, you know, you know when when you, when you get, get those guys, guys that are that are all conference, all American type players, players, right? That, that have that. You know, you you, you got to be able to hold on to those guys. So there so was, was some tampering. tampering. Um, here, here's here's really what I think is happening in college locker rooms right now. I think I think. Guys, guys are sitting, sitting around and they're going, going okay, yeah, I, you know, I like what I'm, 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 I'm treated well. We're winning here. We got good resources, all those things. I'm, I'm staying. Are you staying? Okay. I'm, I'm, yeah, we're both staying. All right. Good. And then in the other locker room, right, there's a guy going like, you know, Hey, I think things are okay here. And one guy goes, well, yeah, but you're not thinking about X, Y, Z, right. And an opportunity that we could, you know, on the other side of the, the, the fence, there's greener pastures and all that stuff. It's, I'm going, are you going? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go. We're, we're all going to go. And that's what's happening, right? It's it's like a mob mentality. And so the, the, the cool thing is right now, you know, teams with good cultures are, are, are winning, right? And you're, you're able to retain your players, you know, right now. And I guess I'm bragging a little bit, but we didn't lose one player that we didn't want to lose. Uh, um, you know, we're, we're retaining all of our best players. The scary thing is all it takes is one day of a bad mom mentality, right? And you, you could lose three or four guys. So, so how do you avoid that day? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'll be honest with you. I, I don't have a great answer other than you do as best you can for them. All right. Uh, uh, quality, quality of life and financially. And financially. It's the same, same thing, thing for coaches, coaches and it's the same thing for players, players right? right? Build, Build them a quality, quality of life and do, and do as best, best you can for them financially. financially. And, and if, it, if it's, if it's not, not through, uh, you know, payment, payment and their and salaries, salaries, then it's then through uh, dinners and, you know, hangouts, hangouts and experiences and taking your coaches out on fishing trips and, you know, whatever it is, right? Same deal with your players, right? You just, you created a culture that, that they're, they're able, able to, to enjoy, enjoy quality of life, and then and you do as best you can for them financially uh, across, across the board. board. And, and then, then you know, know, there's a little bit of a sweet spot, spot of like, like you want, <laughs> you, you want to get, get great, great players, players and great, great coaches, coaches, but but also, also not to the point to where they're, they're so, so damn good, good that you're going to lose them. You know what I mean? I don't know. I mean, I don't have a better answer other than like. There's, There's just, just that, that sweet spot, spot of getting, getting really, really good football, football players, players that, are that are good for, for you <laughs> and maybe, maybe not, not great, great for somebody, somebody else, else that they're willing to spend $150,000 that you don't have. <laughs> so when, when, when your dad was coaching, it was about program building. When you were with Tom Allen, probably at Indiana, it was still about program building. It's been a short period of time. Is it now? Yeah. I know you're still building a program, but how much have you – you mentioned being a GM – how much of it is is now team building as opposed to program building year to year as opposed to over a you know a four or five year period like like uh, yeah, yeah ab absolutely, absolutely it's it, it, it is swung in that direction, direction right, right? It, it, it it is team, team building right because, because you have to have the the, the you know you, you know, have to have the bodies right, right that can perform the guys, the guys that can do the job and do the work once, once you have, you have enough, enough guys, guys that are that over that threshold, threshold that's the first, first thing. thing find, find enough guys, guys that, that, that are uh, are, they are they above the threshold or below the threshold, the threshold to be able to do their job at a high level, level right? right and if you have enough guys that are above the line now that's to me where your culture is better than everybody else's culture that's above this line right but if somebody else has a a, a program where their culture they they've got enough above the line guys and you've got, you've got below the line guys, guys but you got, got a really good culture. culture. That doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't matter. matter. You know what I mean? Like, like they're still going to kick your ass on, on Saturday. Saturday. So, so what, what I, I think, think is the teams that are managing the roster to have above the line talent, talent but then, then they're, they're also, also got, a got a culture and a process and a procedure, and a procedure that, is that is better than the team that they have to face. That to me is is why we won 10 games. And we talk about it all the time. We got good players, right? But we feel like we're, with, with those, those good, good players, players our, our procedures, procedures are better than their procedures. procedures. Our, our standard, standard is better than their standard, standard. and we're holding that to a more consistent basis than the next team throughout the season. All right. <clears throat> um, this is one of my last serious football questions before we start 
getting off the rails a little bit, but all kidding aside, <laughs> um, you you won ten games at South Alabama, went ten and two in the regular season, and you're you're five points away from being. I mean, you lost both games by combined five points. Yeah, you know, you're going into year three. You got like twenty, nineteen or twenty starters coming back. You're going into year three. What are you doing this off season to kind of keep the edge and keep keep them hungry and things like that? What are you? I know that's a, probably one of your, your biggest challenges and what you're trying to do this off season. I mean, it, 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 it is, is the, the challenge, challenge right? right? It's, 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 it's the number, number one thing. thing. Um, you know, you know uh, in, in some, some ways, ways, and it, it wasn't, wasn't fun, fun, but getting, but getting your, your ass, ass kicked in a bowl, bowl game helps, helps a little bit. bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, you know, you, you have this great season. You go 10-2 and two in the regular year. You, you lose by one point to UCLA. Um, and, and, frankly, I you know, that was that – was, there was a poor decision on my part at the end of that game, right, that I, we, we could have won that game. Um and then, you know, you lose to, to five um, at a, or, what, by four, 10 to six, right, your rival. So all those things, right, point in the right direction to where our guys go, man, like, we won 10 games, but, you know, we haven't won a conference championship. We didn't even get to win our side of the league because the two best teams in our league were us and Troy, and Troy had the head to head. We were both seven and one, the only two seven and one teams in the league. It's the first time in Sunbelt history that a seven and one team has not made it to the championship game. Um, so, so, so there's so some, there's of, some those of those things, things but, the but the messaging in our building is every person needs, needs to crank the dial up just a, just a little, little bit, bit right? right? To get, get us to where we want to go. go. What, what we did in 2022, you go, you go look, look at our, our season, season upcoming, upcoming right? right? We, we open, open up with two lane on September 2nd, first game of the year. We go to Oklahoma State. We play Central Michigan. Um uh, back, back here, here. They'll, they'll be a little bit better than they were a year ago. ago. On the other side of the league, we're playing Marshall and James Madison, both really good football teams. Congratulations. A year ago is not good enough for 2023, right? So everybody has to crank the dial forward for us to be able to accomplish what we want to accomplish. And, you know, uh, there, there, there's more out there. I mean, this, this team, you know, 10 wins was awesome, but they're – there is a lot of opportunity for great growth, especially when you got you know twenty returning starters. There's no doubt, because I mean, at the end of the, I mean, the other thing is you've you've kept your coaches intact. Um, even I know they've been attacked. <laughs> they've been attacked, and you've. I'm telling you, we're we're holding both sides of the transfer portal. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, you want to talk about you want to talk about some battles? My gosh, you know. Yeah, that was you know. Now that I got a couple of friends that are head coaches. You know, mo this time of year, it's not about the portal. It's about their coaches and portal. They're trying to trying to keep up. When you got good coaches, they, you know, people want to come get them. So I know that's a that's a fun uh, conversation. Well, and well, that's, that's, that's why I really, really I, that's, that's, why that's why I kind of talk about it the same. same. You ask about yes, transfer, transfer portal, and I'm talking about coaches, coaches and players. players. It's the same, same thing. thing. You pay them as much as you can, and you, and you provide, provide a quality of life better than the, the, the next guy can provide them, right? Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not – <laughs> you know, holding guys accountable to some pretty high standards and expectations, and when they don't meet them, there's some unpleasant conversations you got to have with players and coaches. That that you go to a South Alabama practice, it's not like I'm I'm you know running around you know with with, with a kind uh, voice and spirit all the time, right? Oh, you're, you're, you you seem very soft at practice. You seem very very kind, very yeah, loving. I'm going to work on that. <laughs> Um, I'm just kidding. You don't need to get anybody in. They, they, I, don't they need get to get any, I don't need to get any grittier, uh, you know, <laughs> than, than where we are right now. But, um, but I will say to that point, right, it really is about, you know, especially at the group of five level, I have, I've got a lot of coaches that, that, that are going to, you know, their best football is ahead of them and their best opportunities are ahead of them. And I want to hold on to them for as long as I can, you know, and we're doing that right now. Thank God. Yeah. All right, during the season, how many hours of sleep do you get during during the season on a given night? Because I know you you've you've done the grind. You've, yeah, yeah. Especially at Indiana, I know you were you were rolling. But what? How many hours of sleep is Kane Womack getting on a Tuesday night? Are you counting now? Are you counting, are you counting whether, whether I'm watching, watching Netflix, Netflix at the office, office or at home? I mean, either one. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm not gonna bring it up. But do you still? Oh, I guess I am. Have you changed? Have you changed? Are you still using my logins? What logins? To Hulu. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, Hulu. I, I, you know what? I probably dang. I need to. What was the password? <laughs> yeah. on the when it came when Kane came to uh, when Kane came back to South as a defensive coordinator, 
I went over to his house and he was like showing me, uh, cause Melissa and them, how he was trying to get all stuff in there. And I, I looked on his deal and I was over at his house or something and Hooli was up. Hell, it was in my, my login was still in there. So I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like that was like five years ago. So um, been, been binge, binge watching, watching Hulu episodes <laughs> ever since. Uh, no, I, I, um, you know, it varies by the day. So we're a morning practice team, right? Yeah. So being a morning practice team changes on the front end of the week. You have to grind a little bit. Um, but on the back end of the week, when you get to like Wednesday evening, you know, our coaches can get home in time for dinner. Come Thursday, our coaches are getting out of here, you know, at, at maybe even two o'clock. Uh, coordinators, I keep a little bit longer because we do a we do a coordinator meeting that is an overall game plan. Like, all right, this is what we said on Sunday. We had to do keys to victory to win the game. But are we all on the same page about X, Y, Z? So that's about an hour and a half meeting with me, my coordinators, my assistant head coach. Uh, Matt Shadid, who's the strength, strength coach, coach, you know. You know. Um, but, but to that, that point, point um, on the on front the end of the week, week you know, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting right at five hours. hours. On the back, back end, end of the week, week I'm getting six, six and, and a half. half. You know what I mean? And then and come, come Saturday, Saturday, if we have a, have a night, night game, game, I'm, you know, try, try to crash Friday, Friday night, night. You know. Yeah. No, try to get eight hours. Are you are you someone who can sleep the night before a game, or do you wake up thinking about the game over and over and over, and your brain just goes too fast to sleep? I, I, I have, uh, um, I sleep fine the night before. I always have. Um, but the, but after the game, win or loss, I have a hard time going to sleep, you know, just cause you're, now you have all this information about how to get better as a team, whether you won the game or lost the game. And so like, that's the stuff that keeps me up. So on the front end of the week, however you want to look at it, right back in front end, Right from, from Saturday, Saturday night, night on to, to like, like Tuesday, Tuesday night, night, those are the those are the hardest nights. nights. Yeah. All right, let's talk a little recruiting. Um, what's the farthest you've ever had to travel to go see a recruit? Um, I guess uh, when I was at Indiana, I went to Los Angeles. Um, that was probably the farthest. I was going to. You fit right uh, on in out there, huh? Do what? You fit right on in in L.A. Well, I had well, the I had pants, pants for it, for it. you know yeah. what I mean, already. <laughs> so I had the Lulu pants and, you know, that. And, and I wear Vans everywhere, so, you know. It, it better, better than I fit in in, in, in some rural areas of, of Alabama and Mississippi, I can say that for sure. Um, but, uh, but no, I, I, I went out, um, went out and recruited that area, went to, like, L.A., went to a couple of the private schools that were pretty pretty awesome out there, flew up to San Francisco, all that stuff. Um, I was going to <laughs> – this is great. I was going to recruit a kid in Canada. Um, and that week, I went down to Atlanta and uh, and went to go have dinner um, with, with, with a couple coaches uh, that night, and I parked – I, I parked the, at a Waffle House right next to like this nice restaurant because I was like, there was no parking. I wasn't going to pay a ton for the valet. So long story short, somebody came in and broke into my car and took all my stuff, including my passport. So, so you're, you valet next time? Do what? So you valet from now on? I valet from now on because a girl in the Waffle House, she came in and, and I know we're live, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the joke here. So, so like... She, she walks, walks in, in and she was like, like, she was like, was that your car out there? Yada, yada. And this and that. I was like, yeah, it was. And she was like, well, she's like, they broke your shit. They took your shit. <laughs> You're kidding me. That sucks. Thanks. Uh, Thanks. So anyway, I, uh, has Corey, has Corey ever told you, uh, the story, Corey Batoon is defense coordinator. Corey, Corey ever told you the story about, uh, our field house at John at Arkansas state getting broken into and, my wedding ring and his wedding ring both got stolen out of our locker room. No, no yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, so. How did that happen? During the I spring. Win. Have I told you the story? I don't think so. During the spring, um, we practiced like a late Friday and we had a scrimmage on Saturday. We practiced Friday, had a scrimmage on Saturday. So we had to go watch the film and get a call sheet for the uh, scrimmage done. And so we go in right after practice, whatever, and then we go down to shower. What's well, 30 at night, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night? We got to be back up there at like 7. So I was like, I'd take my watch off and ring and all that stuff and just left it in, in my in my locker. I mean, nothing's ever been stolen. And uh, <clears throat> Corey did the same thing. So 
uh, sometime in the middle of the night, somebody broke in the facility and took the and took our uh, rings and everything else. Well, they never found anything, and then that was like in April. When then November, for whatever reason, I was giving Corey a ride home, and we were getting ready for a road trip, and so we both had to stop at the uh, at the dry cleaners to pick up uh, suits and stuff from the dry cleaners. Yeah, on the yeah. way home on Thursday after practice, and we get there, and you know how Corey Corey is very calm, very I call him the voice of reason. Um, he's never going to get too high, too low. And we're sitting there, and he's looking at me. He gives me this look of like he's when he gives you this look when you know he's pissed, um, but he doesn't really say anything. And then he goes, he walks, he doesn't say anything to me. He walks up to the to the lady taking our, you know, money and getting our stuff. And he goes, excuse me, ma'am, may I please see the manager? And she's like, sure. Is there any problem? He goes, no, I just like to speak to the manager. And so the manager comes up and he's like, yes, sir, is there a problem? He goes, yes, sir, there is. She's wearing my wedding ring. And, and the la- no, the lady that at the dry cleaners, this is like from, this was in November. It got stolen in like April. And I'm, I, I have no idea what's going on. So I'm like, I'm doing with these numbers. <laughs> and um, he's like, well, you can't, you can't say that. You, you know, that's an accusation. He goes, he goes, that's my family crest. And so unless she's a batoon, that's my red wedding ring. If you take it off, it's got this engraved in the, in the inside and he made her take it off and, that's how he got his wedding ring back. How about that? You're, you're kidding me. No, I swear. Wow, have, wow. Ask Corey about it. It's good. So right. did, you, did you find your family crest no, and your wedding no, ring? I did, not have a, I did have a gold. <laughs> because when I got married, gold was cheap, right? Siski's from Alabama. They don't have family don't, crest. Yeah, we, we don't have. I mean, come on. Our family crest they can't was, even spell crest. Our I mean, family they, crest was a uh, Marlboro Red Pack. You yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, it was a, a Budweiser, Budweiser, right? Yeah. Something. Copenhagen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what our family crest was. <laughs> All right, so Kane, Kane, I, I got a question about this because this is this is beautiful. Um, little known fact about Kane Womack and his his uh, hospitality is every single time a uh, visiting team comes and visits, comes to Mobile and gets ready to play, he sends beer and pizza over to the hotel uh, for the visiting coaches. All right, I got two questions. One, has anybody ever turned this down from you? And then two, have has anybody returned the favor? So if you've gone somewhere, have they given you anything? Um, okay. okay. Somebody, somebody has, has turned, turned me down. down. Um, and really? I, I, Do you want to say who? I, I'm not going to say, say who. who. Um, <laughs> I know who. You, you know <laughs> who, right? That's why I asked but, the question. But, is that <laughs> why you asked the question? question? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so if, if you, you turn, turn me down, down – um, I, assume I assume you don't, don't like, like pizza, pizza and beer, and beer so, so I send, I send you, you pudding cups and juice boxes <laughs> because maybe it's a little bit more your flair. Um, so we, we, we uh, I've had, I've had two, two people, uh, one each year, my first year here and, and second year here, uh, that turned us down. And, and so they, they got pudding cups and juice boxes. That is great. So they turned you down on what grounds? I mean, why was it because they, they, they wanted to be, Fiercely competitive, or what was it? Uh, one of them. So it's actually, actually really funny. funny. One of them was like, I think, just like taken back by, like, like ah, I'm not taking pizza, pizza and beer. They probably, probably you, know, you know, put something. <laughs> in, which eventually I'm going to utilize, utilize this. this. Well, you know what I mean? You're gonna be throw, the whole staff's going to be thrown up in national championship game. Something. <laughs> I'm just waiting on my moment. But then, um, but then the other one. Does, does so, so much, much pizza, pizza and beer for his staff, staff before the game, game anyway that it was like, like, hey man, you're wasting, wasting your time. We already got, <laughs> got we already got too much stuff. stuff. <laughs> so, so so both both both, uh, 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 both happened, happened uh, and uh, uh, we ended up winning both, both games. games. But uh, uh, but I did, I did send, send them. Send them. Has anybody ever returned the favor? If you've been road, have you received anything? Because I never in my entire career this has never happened to anyone. Nobody's ever given us anything. We had a couple. Um, there are a couple, couple, couple guys in the Sun Belt that we have. Uh, um, we've got an, an agreement that when when you go to their place, they have a uh, they send send you a beverage. Uh, I mean, you know, on the, this is Buster. The, I was in the Sun Belt forever. Just, 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 a, that for us. just a nice parting gift amongst a couple Sun Belt coaches that you know, kind of a good deal. It's such a good league, the Sun Belt. We we talked about it before the season. It was one of the. We, we got a lot of predictions right. We got a lot of predictions wrong. It was the one that we got right was, hey, I know everybody watches the SEC and you get it. 
But if you're looking for another league to watch that's sneaky good, it's kind of SEC light, as uh, John Summerall said the other day, it's, it's the, it's the Sunbelt. In a league that's that good, so many good young coaches, you're one of them, with bright futures who are on everybody's watch list and hot boards when jobs open up and all that stuff, is it – I know you're super competitive naturally, but is it hard to keep the friendships with those guys, knowing that you're not only competing against each other on the field, but you might be competing against each other for who gets the first big multi-million dollar deal at one of the big power five schools that you all – privately look at well, no I, you know there, there, i'm sure there's some of it trust, trust me the reason why i hate john summer is not because he's not a good coach it's because he's a terrible person that's really what it comes down to right so just so we're all on the same page right uh he spoke so highly of you and then you do that and it's just it makes me wonder i mean i, I like feels like games are getting played because john was like kane kane is santa claus meets the easter bunny and you put them together <laughs> And then you add the Pope, and he's right there. <laughs> he, he meant that in the worst possible way, too. You know what I mean? The worst way. Oh, no. He, he, uh, so, so, you know, we, we, we actually didn't, didn't – we didn't do this on purpose, but we ended up – we vacationed together in the, in the summertime at the, the – y'all, y'all know the Grand Hotel, right? And down in Point Clear, all that stuff. I've heard of it. Hanging out. You know, yeah, yeah. We're, we're poor. We can't do that. <laughs> that's, where, that's, where, that's where all you rich people go. Yeah. I just, you know, I'm, I stay at the Motel 6 up in uh, Daphne. I forgot. It's, it, that's, that's, that's the place I go to get away from people like Cisco. Right. right. <laughs> you know. Uh, anyway. No, I, I really like, I mean, you know, it is where it is. I mean, we, we are. This is, this is a good league. I mean, this is. I'll say, I'll say this, this. there's, there's going to be somebody, somebody from the Sun Belt's going to play in a, in a uh, New Year's Six Bowl game, you know what I mean, in the next in the next year or two here. Or, you know, I guess two years from now, right, somebody's going to be in that playoffs from from uh, from this league. And it, it is. It's good ball. The quality of high school player that we're getting right now um, is is higher than, than what it has ever been. Uh, be, and, 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 and I would say regionally, it's, it's way, way better, better in the, the Sun Belt than, than a lot of other places, places because you we live in these areas of rural programs that don't have the same development as somebody in, you know, Dallas, Texas, or or even some of these programs in Florida or whatever it may be, to where they're untapped potential. And everybody has filled up all of their 12 to 13 high school roster spots that they're going to take in um in july and so if you do a great job of getting a, a senior eval you can steal some really great players out of the high school market so you know to say all that right i think this league is only going to get better and better the resources are only getting better and better um but you know there's some i mean yeah it's competitive man i mean you know john and i are the only two defensive head coaches in the league and we both have been friends for a long time we've liked each other like just just we, we see things the in similar ways like-minded individuals but but damn if i don't want to beat the hell out of that dude you know this time next year uh and and vice versa and i think you know as long as we're open and honest about that right that we can have friendship and enjoy one another and yet at the same time you know hope that Somebody, Somebody trips, trips down, down the flight of stairs. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> wow. Getting brutal over there. Wow. Want John to fall down the stairs, going to poison him with the pizza, and then wants him to fall down the stairs. That's rough. Yeah. That's all. It's all on uh, all on camera now, premeditated. Yeah. All yeah. right. So here's the job. John's like, thank God the game's in Troy next year. Yeah. Right. Oof. So much for so much for that Pope comment, huh? Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. So a lot of fans don't know this. I'm going. I'm going to let the fans in. Let Neil doesn't know this. You are now considered a Talladega veteran. Okay, you have been you have been to the race with me multiple times. Yeah. Okay. Matter of fact, you are the reason I even went to this last race. I don't know if you knew that. I wasn't going until you called me literally like the week before. It's like, hey, you want to go to Talladega? You, hey, let's go to Talladega. All right. So I had to pull it together. But now that you are a Talladega veteran, rate your Talladega experience. Tell me about your Talladega experience. Rate it for me. Not everything, but the good stuff. Well, okay, okay. I, you you are a you're a fun person to go to Talladega with, right? Not me. Rate your experience. No, I know. I'm just saying part of my experience was you know you you 
you got a fun setup, you know what I mean? And and, and my boy Greg Montgomery is is awesome, and, and uh, we have a great time with him. And he's got all the hookups and stuff. I, I um, there are there are a, a lot. There's a lot to see right at Talladega. There, right? There's a lot to take in. Um, a lot. Since sensory especially on, sa- sure. especially on Saturday. Um, and and so when when the cool the cool thing about it is just. You know, I never grew up in that world. I didn't grow up around cars and seeing all that stuff. You know what I mean? Um, so, like, to see all the energy and effort that get put into it and then to see how, you know, how – I mean, it's like I, – I don't know. It, to me, it's like the closest thing that we have to, like um, – uh, uh, to, to like, like over overseas, overseas like, like soccer. soccer, you know what I mean? Like, like, okay. like you like have you your have people, people, right? That like this, this he drives this, this car and he drives it, it come hell or high water, right, right this way. way. If you ain't first, you're last, right? right? And if, if you, you don't, don't, you know, you jive, jive with this, with this guy, guy that drives this car, car you are a bad person. You know what I mean? Like, and and that the only thing I can equate it to is what I hear about, you know, like I don't know, Manchester United, yeah, Man U and Chelsea or something, yeah. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean? Like, because like, I, 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 I think even, even you know, you know Auburn, Alabama, Alabama fans, I mean, there is, there's a hatred there and all that stuff, but at the same time, they still love the game of football. I feel like there's certain drivers that, like, if you like this driver and you, you know what I mean? Like, you were, like, we are. That's very true. We are against each other, man. Like, we don't, we don't see the world the same way, you know? And, you know, we're going to sit next to each other and drink these, these beers, but, no, you know. Cold, cold, it's, it's, cold, 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 cold beverages. What is there? Do you enjoy all kidding aside? Because I, I, I was wondering about this. Is there a part of it that you like? Because that it literally is the last place on earth that you can go, and no one oh. knows who you are. Like, did anybody? Because I, I, I mean, he was, he was, you were the head coach at South Alabama, and you're in Talladega, Alabama. I don't think anybody recognized you the whole weekend. I, I think that yeah, yeah it, was, it was, it was. I think there was, think there was maybe. I think there was one time we were in one of the suites and all that, and that was yeah, well, yeah, yeah. That's, that's where you want to be recognized. Yeah, sterile yeah, environment. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, it's, it's it's wild, man. You can go and like, uh, and you know, I've been with a bunch of people that are, you know, I guess famous. And I mean, no kidding. I went, you know, AJ McCarron will go with us usually. I don't know if he'll be able to go this year, but he was the honorary starter. Like he was the grand marshal of the race, and. That was the only time anybody knew who he was. He was in the infield the rest of the time, and people didn't even recognize him. It's just the craziest. It's the, and you well, can c- kind of cut loose who, a little bit. Who was um, uh, who was it after the the show? Wasn't it Riley Green, right? That did the show. Yeah. Um, did the concert right, and after after the concert, he came over and hung out with us because you know he went to Jacksonville State, and we had you know all of our buddies that coached at Jacksonville State, so we like. Hung out with him for a bit after the game, you know what I mean? Well, well, even or after like, concert, I mean, that was, that was cool. Well, even to the point is, same, well, I don't know if it was the last time. I'm starting to get a little foggy here, so I don't remember if it was the last time or the time before that, but Ricky Stenhouse Jr. came up. He's in the middle yeah. of all the people, and no one knew who he was, and he's like – Because he didn't have his stuff on. But he's, and, then, he's and then he won the race. race. Right? He won the race. And, That's true. And he, and he was in – I'm not talking about – I'm not talking about like in, in a closed room. I'm talking about at the concert on Saturday night in front of thousands of people were just standing there with people walking by you like this on Speedway Boulevard. Nobody had a, even an idea. That was Ricky Stenhouse Jr., a driver. That was, that was pretty, pretty cool. cool. I mean, I got, I got to, to like meet, meet the guy and shake his hand, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to root for you tomorrow. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, he won the race, but that was good. That was good. But he's a – I'm trying to talk Neil into going to the to the race with us this year. What do you think? You think he should do it? I, you know, hey, hey. are you going this year? Are we doing this thing again? Because if we're going to do it, I need to go ahead and start working on it. Well, well yeah, I, you, know, you know, I mean, traditions are traditions. traditions you know? <laughs> okay, I'll start working on it because because our, our boy Greg's probably going to be listening because you're because you're on. Neil, uh, Greg's nickname for Kane is Lululemon. <laughs> okay, that's what Greg calls Kane. Shortened it to Lulu, I think. He shortened it to Lulu. Okay. But if uh, you're about to make fun of Kane for wearing Lululemon, I'm on. I'm Team Kane. No, I'm not gonna make fun of him. I'm actually it's the most comfortable stuff in the world. But here's my thing. All right, so I made a deal with Kane that his first game as a head coach, I was gonna come to the game and I was gonna wear some Lululemons. I was totally against it. So I go. I go to Mobile 
Uh, this was right when this was when we were in the COVID purgatory, you know. Yeah. So I go to Mobile and Kane, and Kane's like, "Look, there's this little lemon <laughs> store down here. Uh, it's right off airport." So he sends me down there. I go down there. I get I get a pair of shorts. I wear them. I'm like, okay. At first, I was a little bit. I was like, why in the hell am I paying ninety dollars for a pair of shorts? Yeah. Okay, that was my first reaction. But yeah. I wore them for Kane, and then I put them up, and I wasn't gonna wear them again until I was like, damn, those things are pretty nice. And so. I started wearing them, and then what I noticed is they held they held up well. And so, Kane, mm-hmm. I'm here to okay. let you know that not only do I have those, I have since purchased another pair of Lululemon <laughs> Look at you. pants. And so, are you proud of me for that? I am. I'm proud, I'm proud of you. I I, 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 mean, I mean, you know, you know that's, that's you, you have to you put have that into my scope, scope where I walk in there and it's like, like Norm from, from Cheers, Cheers right? right? You know what I mean? It's, it's like, like hey, hey, you know, whenever I walk in, you know, <laughs> hey, coach, how, how we doing? doing? Uh, I when mean, literally, you bought you something. Do what? You know what? When was the last time you bought some Lululemons? I mean, last week. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I go in there. I'm not kidding. It's like Norm from Cheers, you know? What I mean? <laughs> um, but I, I, I wear everything. I mean, you know. Socks, socks, underwear, underwear the, whole the whole thing, thing you know what I mean? mean but, but, but it's, it's, it's so, so comfortable. comfortable. And, I've and I've been wearing it for, I don't know. I mean, I since, since 20, you were one of the originals since 2014. Since 2014 I, mean, I mean, you know, you know they give, everybody gives Jim, Jim Harbaugh, Harbaugh credit, credit because, because he switched, switched from, from the pleated pants, pants to whatever. To and I, you, you know, know, I've been rocking that stuff for two years. Yeah. You're, you're the king of Lulu. They, they should be like, you got to get an NIL deal with Lulu. I mean, you should, you know, I mean, if they just give you ten percent of what you spend at Lulu, that would be a great NIL deal for your team. Just give well, you ten like, percent so, mark off. So the so one down, down here just, just moved, moved buildings, buildings right? right? They were in a smaller building. They moved up to a bigger building. And I assumed when I walked in, it was going to be like the Kane Womack Lulu Lemon. You know what I mean? Like they do in a team meeting room or a locker room. You would be right? in, You know, you know I would have my my own deal because I have I've spent enough money. And now you know our even our. Uh, the coaches, coaches and stuff, and stuff you know, know like, rock it. So. so, all right, serious question: Do you believe in ghosts? <laughs> you know what? I know where you're getting with this because you've, you've Neil. He, he, he is he has sat, sat on my couch, couch and he gave he this um, uh, extremely, extremely long story. I'm not, I'm not telling the story. I'm just asking you a question. No, I know. No, I'm, I'm with, with you. you. Um, so, so, like, I, I think, think about, about that, that from time, time to time, time, you know what I mean? Because, because I, I, you know, in, in so, so many ways, ways I trust you and, and appreciate your opinions, opinions right? right? And then there's other times time where I think you're, you know, no. You can say it. Bonk, bonk, cra- no, I'm not going to say, say it. Say but but I, think you're, you're, I think you're out there. I think you, you know, you, 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 uh, and I don't know, I don't know where to go on this one. I want to, I want to think that what you, believe is, is your truth you know what i mean it's, it's real about ghosts but it's i have all never, fun and games. just I've never always tell you it's Do all what? fun just remember what i always tell you it's all fun and games until it happens to you tyler there's I, a room I, right across the corner there that's that's, that's can probably I tell you, haunted can I, can I be honest with you yeah Every, so I, we're upstairs in neil's deal right now in his in his new studio right around the corner he's got a haunted room all right this is uh, hand up. Kane's like, what the hell am a- I doing here? A- every time, every time I walk up those stairs and down those stairs, yeah. dude, I, I I I get a little uneasy feeling. Well, she's watching you. I I, I believe it. Like I I don't feel. I it, well, that stuff messes me up, man. I, yeah, but yeah, you're, but you're, you're 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 a paranoid, paranoid individual, individual in the first. Place. First of all, I am not paranoid. I'm the mo- I, I'm the one that's not paranoid. Now my wife, she's the one that's. She gets a little paranoid about everything. She said just I, last I, week that you think aliens killed Kennedy. I mean, you're that's nuts. That's not what I said. That's not what I said. Kane, hey, Kane, Kane does. If you don't believe in ghosts, you do believe in aliens, though, right? Yeah, yeah I think there's aliens, aliens probably. Yeah, of course. So what is the difference between believing in aliens and believing in ghosts? Tyler, I believe in – I know there are ghosts. Oh, see, I got me one. See, Kane, you're – I, I, so. I had a ghost in Mobile. You, you, okay, because this this, this, this changed. Neil, you, you – you, there yeah, are for sure. for sure. I, I had a ghost. I had a ghost in Mobile See, in, in our true. house in Midtown. And Where were you I, living? What street? What street? <laughs> Japonica, right off of Dolphin. I'm gonna put that on my list tonight. Yeah, yeah. A, a little girl. Really? Yeah, a little girl. Oh jeez. Yeah. Don't don't do that. Yeah. Yeah, dude. dude I'm I'm being dead serious, man. It's all fun and games. My, my wife, my wife never believed me, and then and then here, when we first moved here, um. My my dad was staying here one night, and 
he sent something and my daughter Caroline who we moved here when she was 5 she's like oh yeah that there's a there's a, a ghost in my room but it's friendly like come on, Kane. come on Kane. yeah she's not scared she's not she grew up saying it was there she wasn't scared of it Ooh. I, I, would I would not, not have, have that experience, experience. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you know i mean some, some of it is i just want to deny right, right. so I, I don't know i have never had any i haven't had an experience like that you know what i mean and, and yeah. probably you know I, I don't know i'm i'm really hopeful there's there's, there's a, a number of things that i hope and wish for in my life i'd like to <laughs> Uh, win a national championship one day and all those things but above that maybe coming face to face with a ghost you know what I mean like because at that point I'm, I'm done you know what I mean like, I'm, it's over yeah I can't not, wait for that I'm not making it out of that room you know not, not the same person I can promise you that hey you do stay in the out of that room you do stay in a battle house hotel well yeah I mean that, so know. it's just a matter of time if you spend enough nights in that hotel it's just a matter of time are, are, are you, I mean, not to go down, I, I, we're here anyway, so whatever. <laughs> I mean, uh, have, have outside of the experience that, that you've talked to me about, there have yeah. had other experiences that you don't I've get had, into? I just I've yeah, I've had two. I've had the one at, uh, I've had two, like, oh, excuse me, I've had three. I've had one at my house here in Oxford, or my first house in Oxford. I had, <laughs> I, didn't, I don't live there anymore. Um, I had the one in Greenville in Aaron's house that she grew up in. Which one are you talking about? The experience, the story that's at my house, or you want the one at Aaron's house? No. Oh, geez, I forgot. Yeah, both. Okay. Yeah, so so I had those two, and then when I went to the again, this is me being stupid. Okay, so I admit it. Uh, we went when we were go to we went to the uh, a haunted ghost tour at uh, in Charleston. Yeah. And went to the old Charleston jail, and I have a picture of a ghost on my phone that I took. Oh, you've shown me that one. Yeah. So I've had them. I've had three to where, you know, yeah, I'm good. Neil, are you, are you when you, when say, you say like, like you know, like you had encounters with, with that, that that ghost or ghost? The one in Mobile, I did, for sure. And and yeah, I was like, like, like this day, you can sit here and say I had an encounter. With yes, a ghost. yes, absolutely. Yeah, he saw it. I mean, he saw it with his own eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Saw it and 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 remember what she said and everything. And I went to my and went back in the bedroom. Laura was back there. I was like moved i mean I, I was in tears and she's like what the hell's wrong with you and i told her about it and she's like no you just saw something and i said i was laying on the couch i can tell you precisely what highlight was on it was a sunday night i can tell you precisely who was running the football on the highlight i know what i said i know who i saw i know what it was and you were not drinking that night no and i was wide awake it was 10 20 i was wide awake oh he's got time stamps I don't know. That 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 scares, scares the hell out of me. me. Really does. Yes, I got I chills. chills. So well, I mean, know, it's, it's, in your mind, it's, it's not, not a, a it's not a debate. debate. This is that's, that's real. real. Yeah. Um. And and Laura will tell you to this day that I, I'm nuts. And she'll say it didn't happen. And and I'm telling you it did. And so I know it. I mean, we've we've not when I say fought about it, we've not like fought about it, but we've argued about it. Like I mean, she's like, you didn't see that. I mean, you she, she goes, you were asleep. And I said, that's why I saw Travis Henry running the football. I wasn't asleep. <laughs> I know what was happening. I know exactly. It was a Sunday night in the fall, and I was watching NFL highlights on ESPN. Yeah. Well, if, if there was any less sleep I could get during the season. <laughs> there you go. I can promise you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Mobile, Mobile's known for kind of being haunted, man. I mean, it's, Yeah, you're like a part of it. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, you know. I'm going to start texting you. Haven't had an, I haven't had an experience. You know what I mean? I hope not to. I'm going to start texting you ghost clips during I don't, the season. I, don't, I really don't want to because it's it, it, like 10 o'clock. That, 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 that small, that, that story, story you told me takes up way more, more space, space in my mind than I want it to. You know what I mean? Oh, dude. That's it, why. I, again, it's, it's all fun and games because everybody's like, ha ha, you didn't do that until it happens to you. Because I was that guy. Yeah. I was that guy. I was like, y'all are crazy. Stuff doesn't happen. Yada, yada, yada. Until when the old. My, I, I will remember it to the day I die. I was whatever, 20 something years old in my wife's house that she grew up in and the bathtub turned on. Yeah. And it filled up and it's from here to your freaking bike, man. So what's that? 10 feet. Yeah. And I look over there and the bathtub's on 
And I'm thinking to myself, why am I? Because I'm like groggy, right? I was asleep. I'm like, why in the hell is she taking a bath? Because I looked at my phone. It's like it's two something in the morning. And I reach over there. I'm like, what are you doing? And she goes, and she was laying in the bed next to me. And so I kind of look. I watch the tub fill up. I watch the tub turn off. I watch the water swash, slosh around, and I, and I heard the, the water drain. Got my ass up. Packed my stuff and went over to Ryan's house in the middle of the night. You know, her brother Ryan's. I, I never, I never stayed in that house ever again. And that was, I mean, ever. I never spent the night there ever again. I always stayed at Ryan's house. I stayed at Jeff's house. I stayed at uh, my wife's mother's house. Wherever. I never spent the night in that house again. And we, you know, forever. Not doing it. Wouldn't do it. Done. That's what I mean, Neil. How long did you stay in that house after you had that that that, that encounter? Uh, a uh, couple of years. I mean, I mean and could you just, just sit on the couch, couch and never watch ESPN, ESPN highlights ESPN. again the same way? You know what I mean? Like in my mind, my life is radically changed from that point forward. Would you move? Would you? Would you move? I didn't feel threatened. If I see a snake or a ghost in my house, I'm gone. a snake. Really? Absolutely. If I saw a snake, now see, I'm scared of snakes, and I've had to come home. I had to. I was covering it. I was covering an Ole Miss practice, and had to come home from the practice and kill a snake that was in the house because the girls saw a snake. And sure enough, there was a snake in the house. <laughs> I'm sorry. I gotta tell this. It just when you said that, it hit me. I forgot. I, I honestly did. You're one of my good friends, and it just hit me when you said that. This man has. The most obnoxious fear of snakes that you've ever been around in your life to the point to where he's going he's to be pissed me telling this. <laughs> All right. So when he was a D coordinator, we would, and he would get up and <laughs> leave out of his office. We would get these rubber snakes <laughs> and put them like underneath his, uh, it's like cool. underneath That's his desk terrible. and stuff. That's terrible. Dude. And he, like, he would legit get mad, like, want to fight. Well, yeah, because you're going to give somebody a damn heart attack. <laughs> I mean, hey, so so nobody leave rubber snakes in Kane's I'm, office. I'm terrified of them too. Absolutely, I, I, I wake up. He's pissed just thinking about it. Right do you have, I mean, do you, I, snake, I, I, do you have snake nightmares? Do what? Do you have snake nightmares? Like nightmares about snakes? I do too. I mean, it's the I'm, worst not trying, I'm not trying I'm not to trying go, go too deep here, but, but yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, no, no, I mean, I, 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 I told it. I mean, one of our best players in year one here brought his python to a cookout, and I damn near kicked him off the team. I mean, I'm not joking. I mean, he's one of our best players, and it means, you know. So, so if anybody, anybody with, with, with past drama brings, brings a ghost, ghost into this into building, this you know what I mean? Like, like I don't know, man. man. So which would be worse, ghosts or snakes? Snakes. I don't know. I, I think snakes I mean, would I don't like snakes either. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I, either, either one, one would be just, just I don't know. know. I really I don't. don't. Are you still mad about Dude, us we putting killed, rubber snakes in your office? We killed a copperhead across the street, and that damn thing was – snapping and stuff i didn't sleep well for two weeks how'd you kill it a neighbor i didn't do it I, i'm too scared to kill it a neighbor came and killed it with like one of those hoes and stuff yeah. chopping it up and that damn thing's snapping and i'm like no no can no, you no, had no. to had a snake in your backyard yeah, yeah I, bought I bought a cat, a cat. <laughs> I'm not joking i bought a cat i mean i mean a cat no, cat'll cat. cat get rid of snakes huh a cat you get one of those. I hate a cat, oh, like a tomcat. Oh well, a tomcat. I'm not a cat guy. What do oh, you yeah. got? A cat? Bags, Bags the cat. That's this dude is. This dude is a. He, he's a legitimate. Like he's a predator. He's a killer. And and and, and, and if I throw a ball in the yard, he fetches it. It's the damn. It's, it's, it's a hybrid. It's a hybrid cat. It's like a dog. Sla it's a Labrador it's cat. Like a, yeah, man. He wrestles with you. Like I'm not a cat person. I don't like cats. But. The, the, he keeps he me protected, protected, you know what I mean, from, from you know, you know from, from the snakes. snakes. And, 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 and if there's an animal that keeps out the ghost, I'm going to buy that damn thing, thing too. too. Because <laughs> here's the thing, I think you're right. And the the if like if I if it was a snake, I would move. And if there was a ghost, I would also move. But in my mind, the snake can't travel through the air or whatever those things do. You know what I mean? Like that that in my mind, I guess a ghost would be worse. Because I would always, always be wondering, wondering, you know, you know where what is <laughs> lurking. I, I, I would not. I'm, I'm telling you, fellas, I hope I get to the end of my life and I do not have an experience like you guys had because I would not handle it very well. <laughs> so you don't watch any of the ghost shows on TV or anything? 
Hell no. No, 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 absolutely, absolutely not. not. Oh, I'm going to find some clips. <laughs> Ancient <laughs> aliens on history channels about as far as I go. I'm going to start. I'm going to start finding just r- rancid ghost clips and sending them to you where you have to watch them. And I mean, I'll, 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 I will literally, I will block your phone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you, this people, is the last conversation we ever I'll get, a, I'll get a new cell number. People have no idea how many people on Twitter have been muted by me because whenever there's some viral snake thing, they send it to me over and over. And I'm like, okay, I'm just muting that person. I I, I, I don't want 30 clips of the wild cobra going down. So I, no, hey, good. did you, did y'all, either one of y'all see the clip on YouTube where the guy who was like a, Guy it was in his in his uh yeah roof, everybody... and there was like a little snake coming down and he like poked it and a freaking <laughs> massive python fell out. It got sent to me by like hundred and fifty people. It was multiple pythons. Well, yeah, it was huge. <laughs> One and then all of a sudden multiple came down. Yeah. What what if what if Melissa said there's something in the in the air vent and you go and you and you pull the air vent down and pythons fall out? It's their house. Are you just are you are you packing up and never going back? Yeah, I, I'm not packing. Somebody else is packing. You know what I mean? My ass is out of there. He's hiring a moving company. I'm done. Yeah, the, I mean, the snakes have claimed the house at that point. It's theirs. They've claimed the house. If you, if if, if I go up in my attic and there's a, a a collection of pythons, yeah, it's their house. And you're not going in there and getting them out or sending anybody to get it to remove them. No, we're moving. <laughs> Clark Ford, Clark Ford Studios Mobile. Well, there's someone <laughs> someone's going to come move all this stuff. Who's not as terrified of them as I am? I'm, I'm no way. Yeah, somebody, somebody else would come to it, and then just to, to get the value of the home and the resell. But other than that, yeah, <laughs> we're keeping it super quiet too. We're not telling a damn soul. Well, brother, no, no, I mean, no, no. getting our money, we're getting out. Brother, we have kept you uh, long enough. First of all, thank you so much for your time. I know it's, uh, I know you're you're busy this time of year. When we start spring ball, uh, we, we start, start on March seventeenth. So, oh, St. Patty's Day. St. Patty's, Patty's Day. Day. I, was I was supposed to go play, play golf, golf this afternoon, too, too just so you know how much I like you, too. When did you oh, wow. start playing golf like that? Dude, I got back into it. I, and, and honestly, Neil, I have not – I didn't play golf since since I became a defensive coordinator. I left Ole Miss and became a D coordinator at Eastern Illinois until, like, at the end of last summer. And I've, I'm, I'm in it now. I'm in got, have you gotten good? I, I've gotten pretty good. I'm getting in there. How about so, that? so, are you ready? Are you ready to play your boy Cisco? I mean, I mean, yeah. yeah you you say, say that, that like, like Tiger, Tiger Woods, Woods is on the other side of this side. Right now you're like, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> now you do hit it a country mile. I'll give you that. I don't you know, know where it's mean? going. There's no idea where it's going. But None. You do it a long ways. And 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 occasionally, if you get hot, you know, you can get rolling. So I'm actually going and playing. I'm playing, I'm playing uh, uh, with, with, with Freeze. Freeze. I got invited to go to uh, Shades, Shades Valley. Valley. It's, it's like, like the sister. I thought he wasn't playing golf anymore. Now that he's the head coach at Auburn, I thought he wasn't going to play golf anymore. <laughs> well, uh, you know, this is a this is a May thing. This is a top, post, top secret post. trip. <laughs> yeah, that's right. right. Um, so, anyway, so anyway, I'm going on, on this trip. I guess a couple guys, some Auburn guys, some people from down here in Mobile, whatever. Um, and, you know, I mean, I'm competitive. I'm competitive. Like, if I'm going to go, I'm not going to get embarrassed. So, you know, or at least I'm going to make an effort not to. So, All right, let me tell you how to beat Freeze in golf. How? All right, so the first tee shot, the very first tee shot, he's going he's going, he's going to hit. He, he hits a draw. If he hits it, if he hits it, like, bad, just say, man, that was a great shot, great shot. And he'll, he'll start getting pissed off and start getting in his head. Okay, but if he puts it in the fairway – that's usually a bad sign because he's going to be off the hot. But here's his weakness, okay? He w- he he is a threat to get a little 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 side stream on the on the old putty, okay? So just mess with him, like when he uh, just be dead serious because you can do it. You can you're like me. You can say jokes and stuff with straight face. Let him just roll one by like ten feet or come short and just be like, man, that's a really good touch right there. <laughs> and he'll just, he'll just just pick up and walk off. He will get he'll get mad. He'll start three putting and everything else. Start hitting him out of bounds. You have to play. You have to get in. You have to play mind games with Freeze on the golf course. Because if he gets hot, then he can he can go low. But don't man, don't let him. Man don't can let hit, him. A, hit a ball. Cool. Yeah, impressive. but don't like don't challenge him to the point to where make him think that he's better than you, and then go out there and play mind games with him. That's how you, that's how you have to keep it close. There, there you go. go. Well, well so, so anyway, anyway uh, playing playing play, some, play some golf, golf but. but Glad to be on with you guys, man. Yep. Really fun stuff. Appreciate, Appreciate you being you, with us a whole bunch. That's uh, Kane Womack, right. the South Alabama coach. Thanks, buddy. See you guys. I'll holler at you.
How about that? Yeah, that's my guy. He's a good dude. He uh, is. We've been brought to you by Walk-On Sports Bistro. They put everything they've got into bringing you game day with the taste of Louisiana. Dig into their mouth-watering. Made from scratch, Louisiana cuisine, po' boys, gumbo, voodoo shrimp, fan favorites like juicy burgers, fresh salads, all in front of 70-plus TVs, 40-plus ice-cold beers on tap. Uh, check them out in Oxford or uh, Ridgeland today. Also, check them out online at walkons.com on the convenient Walk-On's app. We've also been brought to you by our friends at Comer Heating and Air, Southern Air Conditioning and Heating, uh, different names, same great products, same great services, same people. If you live in Oxford, Batesville, Tupelo, that area, call Comer, 662-801-1777. If you live in Hernando, Memphis, South Haven, that area, get in touch with our friends at Southern, 662-429-4429. If the AC's not in tip-top shape, now's the time to make sure that it gets that way. It's going to get hot. You know how that works. As the calendar turns to March, April comes after that, then the summer rolls around. So time to get in touch with our friends at Comer and southern and a reminder we've been brought to you uh, by our friends at rain total body fuel 300 milligrams natural caffeine bcaa's electrolytes zero sugar it's got what you need to push the limits and achieve your goals check them out on instagram at rain body fuel to uh, learn more you guys probably figured out by now that both of us are uh, big kane womack fans so yep a lot of fun to hang out with him he's a stud man he's a, he's one of my good friends in the business and he's uh <laughs> kind of like some and that's probably the thing I like about him is what you see, that's that's who he is. There's no yeah. speak, coach speak or whatever. He, he tells it like it is, and uh, he's a stud, man. He's uh, fast, fast rising in this business, and mm-hmm. he will be a uh, big-time head coach sooner rather than later. Yeah. So I, but I love him to death. 24 months or so. <laughs> yeah, if not faster. Um, but he's a, he's a really good dude, and uh, I'm glad that uh, that he's doing well. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's fun to see him do well in Mobile. I mean, I, I've, I was there for, as you are, for a long time. I have a lot of people that I know South Alabama means a lot to them. And it was cool that night, even though they lost, it was cool to um, see that atmosphere at a South Alabama game. Because I'll be honest with you, when I first moved to Mobile, they didn't have football at South Alabama. And when they first started football at South Alabama, I thought, this is never going to happen yeah. here. I mean, because that state is so eat up with Alabama and Auburn that I thought there's just no room for anything else. And you got the other thing that people don't realize in Mobile is LSU is actually the closest school. Yeah, LSU's three. To, LSU's three hours. Yeah, from from uh, you can be at, in Tiger Stadium in less than three hours when you leave downtown Mobile. Yeah, which is and you can, hey, you can be at Florida State pretty quick too. Three hours on the nose. Yeah, so uh, there's a lot of competition. He's yep. done a great job. So again, our thanks to uh, to him for his time today. We'll be back on Thursday. Don't know really what we have planned on Thursday, but. Uh, thanks to Tyler for booking uh, Kane. It was a great segment. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for being with us today. We'll talk to you again on Thursday on the next edition of McCready and Siski, powered by Rain Total Body Fuel. Until then, take care.